Comic books. Comic books. Comic books. I have lots of comic books. Unfortunately, a lot of them are in storage. <laughs> Do you have any? Uh, I have a couple. I got rid of a lot of them a while ago. I got rid of a lot too, actually. Just I don't know. They just it kind of they kind of lost their meaning for me to collect them. And uh, I usually now collect if I see an artist I like, like Mignola, I'll I'll get some Hellboys. And uh, I'll use them for copying. I, I like when they do, like an artist does a sketchbook. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like it. Then I can copy it and stuff. But uh, I don't know. Lately, I was just thinking about this the other day. It used to be like comic book store. Comic used to be written for kids. Sure. And uh, they had simple stories that were uh, serialized. And you could pick up a book anywhere in the line. You can pick up a new character who just caught your interest read the story maybe one or two things you didn't quite understand like his origin or whatnot but you could still read the comic have a good enjoyable time reading <clears throat> and then if you really liked it you picked up the next issue if you could find it if you could find it uh but now it seems like they're written for adults and they're they're the stories are dense and you have to follow 12 different characters to find out the full story. I mean, it used it, in the com when I grew up reading, if they mentioned like another character, like you know, Spider Man's fighting the rhino, and the rhino mentions this the silver surfer, you know, you'd have a little asterisk and it went on the bottom would say, see silver surfer number 125. It, it, it it added to the the feeling that the universe was bigger than it was, mm. but it wasn't necessary to the story you were reading. Mm. You know, and uh, I miss that. I miss that sort of uh, just monthly story, bit of entertainment. You could pick up a book and read it because they were everywhere. You know, you go to the barber shop, there were comics. You'd be waiting in the doctor's office, there'd be comics. You know, now it's like everybody gets two or three comics, one to read, one to sell, one to keep, you know, and they, they, everything's hermetically sealed. And I have people buy these comics, they send them away to get uh, approved. To get graded, yeah. They didn't, they come back in this, you know, uh, adamantium box that you can't break open. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, the, the CGC, comic book grading, whatever. I just missed that immediacy where hey here's a comic book i'm gonna read it and it, it that we you know as a kid i like superheroes but you know if, if you had a character like i, I read spider-man and conan uh occasionally fantastic four i didn't really read uh thor daredevil a couple of times you know a little bit but i also read archie and and uh, little lulu and uh herbie you would read, or, or or I'd go to uh, what was it, Carlton Comics and Gold Key. They would do TV show comics and movie comics. I would read those. It had right. what's the one? Uh, something Illustrated. Classics Illustrated. Illustrated would be classic stories. I'd read those. Anything with like comic. If it was a comic, it was immediately attracted you. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. That's interesting. Tarzan. Tarzan was my big favorite. They're Tarzan, Tarzan. Yeah. A lot of companies publish Tarzan stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cold Key, Marvel, DC. Yeah. And now, I don't know, it's just you go in a comic book store and he's, nothing attracts me. The stories are, are uh, they're like a soap opera, way too complicated. And you, ha you know, you, you can't pick up a book and read something because it, it references so many other things. And it's only a, a small part of a bigger story. And it's not, not, not the story just within that character, but, you know, so you get multiple characters you have to read. It's just not fun anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I don't read. I mean, what you're talking about was going on even back in the uh, 90s and 2000s yeah. where you would have four four issues, four different 
Spider-Man titles and you had to buy all four to get the story and people would get mad because it's like, I just want to read this one. I don't want to read that one. But if I, yeah, it was, it was a trick to get you to buy all their books. Or comics. Yeah, it was it? The Amazing Spider-Man. I started reading that. Then they came out with the... Spectacular Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Then it was Peter Parker, Sp- Spider-Man. And then... and it was Spidey Super Stories. Yeah. And then there was Web of Spider-Man. Believe yeah. me, I remember all this. This was a while ago, though, but yeah. yeah. And I, I uh, in the 90s, when comic book stores became started to become popular, I was working with a guy, and he showed me a Predator comic. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, so that's when I started reading comics again. But then that's when they started to become collectibles, and people were buying yeah. Yeah. to uh, as investments. Yeah. It's just like yep. the whole thing. And then big corporations bought out comic books and yeah. really ruined them because he had variant covers and, and then the art got way over rendered yeah <laughs> now, I, I, Im- I look, image comics yeah i like a much simpler rendering style like john ramita john buscema yeah kirby kirby was like all over the place but you could still kind of read the panel if it had no color sure yeah now you have to you, you're looking at it and you're like what am i looking at i can't because there's lines everywhere and everything's sort of it's like, almost like a page of model gray and until they color it you can't always tell what's going on well i i have no clue about today's books i mean i hear a lot of horror stories about them so i don't know i mean the last comics that i remember buying off the new were probably in the late 90s maybe and that was it i mean 2000s maybe some but there's there seems to be a year, I don't know if it was five, ten years ago, when comic books have changed. They've been taken over by a new group of uh of people and they're more they're more woke, I think is the word or whatever. So I quit. I g I'm done. You know? <coughs> I, I and and the other thing about it too is that like for me, a lot of the artists that I grew up with that I thought were the greats are all gone. I mean, they're pretty much all gone except for a few from the seventies, maybe in they might not be doing that much work, but they might be doing commissions or whatever. There's good new artists, but I don't know. There's something about it, you know, that doesn't. And and the and and the main one of the main reasons is the price. I I have a hard time paying for about four or five bucks for a comic book. Yeah, That's you know, they, it's just they, the way it is. And you know, they're always. I hear people complaining. You know, what, where are the new up and coming kids reading comic books? You know, because uh, most comic book fans are older. Sure. They, you read it. But it's like, well, you can't. because You can't expect kids, you know, like a 10. I, I, I was buying comics when I was seven years old. And, you sure. Know, you get a dime from your mom or if you got like one of those big issues would be a quarter. Sure. Yeah. The cloud, the giant size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I have uh, five bucks or seven bucks or whatever for uh you know, a comic book, and and plus how they write them now. They're um, they woke. Yeah, but they're also written so that they can be collected into graphic novels. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Storytelling of it too, and yeah, and they're woke. They're they're they're. Uh, it's not like they're trying to be political per se, but the pandering. They're pandering to what they think is going to. By comic, everything's about. Well, it wasn't the past too, but well, it, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they're I believe they're just writing comics for a for a subset of the comic book fans. You know, really? I don't believe that. And and then the and then there's guys out there that are that are trying to do comics that are more in line with the stuff that is more traditional. But they were all inspired by. The 90s image books, right. which I was never a big fan of either. So that's like their great inspiration. So that's actually better, but it still doesn't like, you know, there, there, there is a guy out there who I just saw his work and his name is, there's two guys, but this guy, I'll mention this one guy. His name is Rob, I think his name is Rob De La Torre. He draws exactly like John Buscema almost. I don't know what book he works on, maybe a Conan book, but I saw some yeah. images by him and it's, and he was like, and there's another guy, Gall, and there's another guy who works for um, 
for for the shutter magazines, you know, the the Warren style magazine. His name was Benito Santiago, and he draws a lot like Bessema too. But he seems to be a little more swipey than Rob De La Torre. But they draw. So there's there are good artists out there. It's a you third, know, uh, Bugatti or I can't remember his name. I follow him on Facebook. He also he, he's got a definitely he's influenced by Buscema, mm-hmm. but. It's not like he's sitting there copying poses to. Right, right. He has. A, he just came. He just figured it I, out. Yeah, he he figured out. Well, he, he draws like him. So, but he does his own stuff. So it it's 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 an influence rather than a copying. Yeah. So so, so as, as far as modern comics go, I, I, there's a lot of people talking about him online. I have no no uh, opinion or interest. I just don't like him. Uh, I haven't seen many that I like. There was a few artists that came out in the last fifteen or twenty years. One of them passed away, Darwin Cook. There's a couple of yeah. other ones that had a that had a a cool uh, style. Yeah, Darwin Cook, uh, Tim, Bruce Tim, Bruce Tim, uh, Paul Dini kind of kind of draws like that. They had a similar style though. They had a more cartoony yeah. style, but it was nice. Yeah, and the the Batman Adventures, the the comic book, like Tim Bruce Tim. That did, which followed the animated series. It um, it had that sort of episodic uh, writing style, so you could pick up a book, read it, and then it wasn't like continued in the month or whatever. Or if it did, it it alluded to some things. And sometimes you'd pick up a book, and they'd have several shorter stories in it, and it was nice. It was like the old fashioned comic books, and that's one of the things I started collecting in. Um, well, well, those books, the the Shudder and Vampirus Carmilla that uh, they put out that Don Glute works on those. Right. When you go to the it's, when you go to the the you know uh, Barnes and Noble or whatever Books a Million, those look like books that you read back in the seventies. You know, so you, that's that's actually one of the more that's actually the, about the only new stuff that I read because it does take you back. And sometimes I wonder, am I just trying to buy like? trying to get the childhood feeling again when I buy these books. I mean, they're fine. They're good. They're fun. Right. But it's just like, you know, it's just you go there and you buy these books, which are not that cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than some of the other books. Right. And it's like, well, am I trying to just get the feel of, because they use a lot of the covers from the same guys. The interior artists are all new guys, but they're all very good. And the writing's fine. You know, they have, they have, they, they have that style of creepy and eerie and EC comics and all that. But that's probably one of the few things that I see that does to harken back to uh, classic days of uh, magazines, yeah, magazines or whatever. BB you know, so that's about it. That's about all the new stuff that I buy. You know, I know you might be looking for some nostalgia, but you also look you're looking for that fun read. You pick up a book and read it, and it was entertaining. You know, you could read it at lunchtime at work, or you know, you yeah. Home. Buy it and you know, you have a beer or coffee, whatever you have, and then it's just like, I don't read this comic, or you can read a couple of comic books. It was fun, you know. The, the, the comic books now seem like serious. they got very, they got very serious, yeah. And I, I don't, I mean, yeah, serious is okay, but I don't want to read comics for, for serious. And a lot of in the, some of these comics have way too many words, and I think they, yeah. Feel, they forget that comics is a visual medium. Visual medium. It's not uh, uh, prose. I mean, if I wanted words, I would read a book, and which is what I do. I read a book, and, and even now, some it's hard to find. I read old uh, books from uh, you know that that uh, interesting, but weren't worried about having a series. Of like twenty books that they could then make into a movie and merch. They would they would write books for magazines. Now, when, when you read the Tarzan books, I know you're an ERB guy. When you yeah. read the old Tarzan books, were they faithful to yeah. the stories? They were faithful. Well, some some were, some weren't. But even if they deviated, they had the spirit of uh... spirit. Yeah. What even about they... the Conan stuff? Because I remember reading a few Conan novels, but. I don't remember them as well, but I read the comics more than the novels. Uh, yeah, the comics were also uh, uh, faithful. They were close. Yeah, close to the the feeling of the series because this it's basically 
when you read the stories, it's like you're in a bar and you hear this old guy you know, telling about, I remember this time I was a you know pirate down in the South Seas and I was doing it. And he'd tell you the story and listen to, uh, he, he didn't have a magical sword or, you know, a magical shield or whatever. He was just this tough SOB who, you know, would go out to the world and had these adventures. And, and that's it, you know. But now if you read any kind of fantasy or sword and sorcery, it's all like Lord of the Rings. Everybody has a magic sword and they're going, you know, to get a magic ring. or to, You know, everything's, you know, magic. And everything happens regardless of who the person is. But, they were still they were still doing that back then. Remember Elf Quest and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, it was yeah, it's true. They were doing it back then. And look, but it's not it's not it wasn't a predominant Right. I mean fantasy to me, I grew up when I was a kid in the sixties and early seventies. I you know <coughs> I guess I still am. Um but fantasy was really different. They they would touch on elves, but it wasn't like Tolkien elves. They had different magic magical mm. Like Lord Dunsany wrote a lot of magic stuff, uh, oh fantasy stuff, and and uh, uh, oh God, I can't remember. Yeah, myth he would write about, but it had this sort of mystical uh, way of telling things, and um, it 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 it, um, it was, it was kind of if if. King Crimson's song, Court of the Crimson King, was turned into a novel or a, or a short story. That's the feeling you would get. That sort of uh, olden time feeling and uh, uh, mystical medieval, but not always medieval. You know, you would you would you would have this very atmospheric feeling to the to the novels. And now it's all like Lord of the Ring crap. Yeah, I mean, you know, but people like it. And CGI, of course, is the uh... You know, that's the thing about CGI. With that, you can you can you can kind of do anything you want in film, but after a while, you start losing the re- you start you start losing the believability. To, I do anyway because you you know it's a cartoon or it's a CGI. Whereas, you know, when you see a movie and it's a special effect, but it's a practical effect, yeah. it seems more visceral to me. But you know, nowadays. The Mar- of course, you have to need you need CGI to do a Marvel movie. You need CGI to do a uh, Lord you know, of the Rings movie. But what happens is the the CGI is so expensive, it yeah. becomes the star of the movie. It is the star. I was like, oh, well, yeah, whatever. It is uh, the star. So you read the Conans and you read the uh, Conan. I read Edgar Rice Burroughs, and Clark Ashton Smith, Lynn Carter. Did you read the Did you read the comic books of? Uh, I think it was Lynn Carter, uh, Fafford and the Grey Mouse. Did you ever yeah, read those? I was drawn by Mike Mignola. No, no, no. I'm talking about the 70s ones. Never saw the 70s ones? I think it was Howard Chaikin who did those. It was, it was, it was called, the, I think the book was called Sword of Sorcery, and it was Fafford and the Grey Mauser. We'll, oh. we'll, fi- we'll find them online and you can take yeah, a we'll look at them. And, uh, and it was, uh, and it was for, for our next show. We'll, we'll find them online and you can, you can, go through them i think it was chaken who drew them they were a lot of fun man in the 70s you know yeah the 70s was good but also the 70s was i was kind of uh sort of getting out of it was early 70s though yeah early 70s i still reading comics up until like my last year of high school first year of college i kind of like drifted away getting more serious about drawing and and but uh <clears throat> yeah, I read if if it was a fantasy. See, that's the thing. If it was a fantasy comic, and the art was cool, I would pick it up and read it. You yeah. Know? And uh, so a lot of time, and again, it, even in New York, where a lot of the, the uh, comic book offices were, you know, your local cigar store or uh, grocery store uh, would would be iffy on getting the next issue of something. You know. Oh God, yeah. You know, and, uh, so you'd you'd read it something. If it was continued, or you wanted the next issue, you'd have to haunt the. You know, well, that's what that's what that's uh, what the, the the original purpose for me of the comic book store was to go to a place where you could right. find all those issues that you missed. Right. Yeah. Then it kind of then after a while it became like more more emphasis on new books. I don't yeah. know what it is now, but back then 
it was like in the mid 70s when I found a comic shop. Oh man, they have those FF issues that I missed. Oh, they have, of course, the prices went up, but it's like, oh yeah, this is a continuation of the Spider Man. Oh, I didn't have these. Uh, well, getting back to the sorts the fantasy stuff, which I loved in the early 70s, I didn't have these issues of Korak, which had the back issue, the, the, the second story, which was like Carson of Venus by uh, Mike Kaluta. You know, so I was able to get all those. So that was great because I'd yeah. never some of them I'd never seen before. I may have seen one. And the best part of the comic shops back then was when they had the quarter books. Oh, my God. You could find oh. like yeah, yeah. you could find gold in there. I would sit there in the, in the quarter section. If somebody had like a big I would sit my butt down back when I could actually sit on the floor for a while and then get up without like, you know, pain <laughs> and just and just. <laughs> and just and just pull out the, the the best one was one day i was at this comic shop and they were all a quarter this is the best one i ever did i pill i pulled out the entire run of tomb of dracula all 70 issues oh my god for a quarter yeah. piece not in great shape but i had the entire oh. the entire run Somebody just dumped it there, and I went, okay, I'll take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Oh, 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 here's all my, well, here's all of them. Okay, here you go. So 70 issues, you know, uh, seven, I mean, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks it cost me. I don't know. I, I'm not going to do the math yeah. right now, but that was classic. My sister was in college, and she was taking a literary class, and the teacher uh, for part of the class uh, uh went over tomb of dracula comic and how the wow about the storytelling stuff and she would bring home some issues and i'm like oh what's this and i i, I read them like oh man this is great you know yeah it, yeah it's fantastic so you get some really yeah because gene colin the artist was very yeah he used a lot of dark shadow and chiaroscuro and then tom palmer the anchor was the best anchor ever for gene colin says he knew how to ink them he knew how to take those shadowy shapes and figures and stuff and make them look beautiful as opposed yeah. to some other guys that not so much, but yeah. you know, but anyway, yeah, Tomb of Dracula. Yeah. There was also, I uh, like one, the, some comment, some, uh, tobacco store had, um, they did a lot of Dell. Chonko oh yeah. And, uh, gold key. And they had a lot of sort of twilight zone. Yeah. No UFOs. I remember reading these comics. I was little. I was, Ripley, believe it or not, comics. Yes. Yeah, reading something about uh, uh, some UFO landed and all these little midget aliens mm -hmm. came out and were attacking this family and scared the hell out of me. And I, uh, I, I <laughs> it gave me nightmares for a couple of days. That's that's but wild. I, well, there was there was one where uh, I think it was the Twilight Zone one where this kid was bald and it was like the the, um, like the 1800s in America, and everybody would make fun of him and stuff. So uh, he, you know, the teacher walked him home, was trying to make him feel better and stuff. You know, so he, and she wanted to talk to his father. So they get home, and you know, she knocks on the door, and the father comes out, and the father's in the shape of a giant egg. I've seen that story. <laughs> For some reason, I've seen so that story. <laughs> I've seen that. One. <laughs> no, but you know, you know, another one of the ones that was so great was when I was a kid. I would get the issues of Creepy and Eerie in the late '60s, early '70s, yeah. and I would read. People would say like, "Oh, these are so in the style of EC Comics," and I'm like, "What is EC Comics?" I had no oh, idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And then one day, I don't know which was first, the hardcover or the movie, but one day. I saw the movie and I thought, oh, that Tales from the Crib, what a great movie. And then I think I think around the same time they released a hardcover book. Mm -hmm. It was expensive, it was like twenty bucks, but yeah. it was reprints of the best stories. And I always wanted that book. I never got it. Yeah. My, my 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 late great pal CK had one when he was a kid, so he got lucky. He got one. I, I actually a friend of mine actually got it for me a few years ago for Christmas, a used copy of it, but I remember seeing that book and I was like, oh my God, yeah. you know, I've never seen EC stories. I mean, I want to see this stuff because I knew it was the same guys that drew for Creepy and Eerie. But then yeah. when comic shops opened, 
Then, fa- then the other thing that, that, that opened my eyes was fanzines, where you had all yeah. the sketches from all the artists that you never yeah. saw. And it yeah. was like Rice and Jones, Kaluta, and then you had Frazetta sketches and all those Frazetta books. The other one that opened my eyes was, you probably had them too. Remember, I still have them here. In the 70s, the Ballantine Books put these uh, Frazetta uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, trade paperbacks, whatever you want to call them, but it was just collections of his art. Oh, my God, yeah. the art of Frank Frazetta. That yeah. was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, God, I can remember getting my first one. You did. You did buy it, huh? Paid for it with my uh, uh, Paperboy money, uh, getting it and opening up this, because I think it came wrapped in cellophane. It, it, did, came, it did come wrapped, oh, yeah. <laughs> opening it up, I'm like, <gasps> and then you would see pen sketches you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, my God. Oh. God. Yeah. I would spend hours at the bookstore because, like, you know, when my folks would go to the mall shop and they drop me off at the bookstore, and I would just spend hours looking at the covers, particularly like the Frazetta covers. And it's just, I used to buy the Conan paperbacks just for the covers. Uh, yeah. And then I would, and then me and my friends would go to uh, used bookstores and Goodwills. Yeah. And just looking for Jeff Jones, Frazetta covers, Ace paperbacks, whatever. I remember one time I went to a Goodwill where I used to live in Hialeah, and in the back they had about 30 ace paperbacks with Frazetta covers, 10 cents each, oh. 10 cents each. I was like, come to, come to Papa. Yeah. yeah. I still have them, but yeah, I used to do that all the time. I never read the books. I mean, well, occasionally I would read a book, but I never really read them, but I would just get the covers because I loved them so much. Now, unlike other people who would tear the cover off and throw away the book, I kept the book, you know, but... But anyway, yeah, those I was buy. I would, I would, I actually read the Conan stories back when I was a kid. But I would see the cover, and it was so enticing that I had to, you know, buy it off the stand for a buck or whatever. Ask my parents, can you buy this for me? Okay, sure. At least you're reading something, you know. So, yeah, yeah. There was like, there was those Frazetta books. There was like four or five of them. Those were like, those were like with with the with the EC horror book. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't get until later on the Frazetta books, which I did. There was a there was a horror book that used to be at Walden. Did you guys have a Walden books for you? Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a green there was a there was a horror book called Dennis Gifford's History of Co- Horror Movies, and it had a green cover with all the monsters painted. That was the yeah. other heavy duty book back then. I wanted that so much. For some reason, I never bought it. Even it was though, always like five bucks in the. I, in the I, I you know, I look back sometimes. I'm like, what? Well, I know, like, my mom's like, are you wasting your money on that? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So yeah. You get that in your head, and you're like, oh, should I? I don't... And so we I... weren't rich, you know? I mean, at that well, point, yeah, sure, true. you could yeah. get a couple of books, but when you're talking about hardcovers, you're talking in the $4 range or $5 range, and you're like, oh, shoot, I don't have five bucks. I have a dollar, yeah, you yeah. know? <laughs> and, I, and unfortunately, I had, I had spent the other dollar I had at the uh, arcade, you know, yeah. playing, you know, stupid video games. But, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. But when I got a job, oh, my God, the sky was the limit. I started, like, I, I would have to, I would go buy books. And when my parents would come in, my parents would look at me, you buying comics again? I bought a stack of them. I'm like, yeah. So then I said, you know what? I'll wait till they go to sleep. And I'd, when they, <laughs> I'd wait till they were sleeping and go in the car and grab the big bundle of quarter comics and bring them in and, like, <laughs> you know. Because I'd get I'd get crap for it, you know. You bringing in more crap in here? Of course, now I'm feeling the the effects of it. But you know, I get, did get rid of all, most of my comics. But uh, but anyway, but then of course, like a, like the genius that I am, when I go to conventions, I buy I try to buy them back cheap. I can't do it all yeah. of them. I do some of them. But yeah, at any yeah. rate, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to buy. I I didn't. I never really bought Charlton comics that much though. I buy them now. I love them now, but I never really bought them that much because I didn't have enough money, and I would always go for the Marvels and the DCs and the Warrens and some of the other companies. But I never really did buy. But I do. But I do have a bunch of them now, and I do enjoy the heck out of them because they were always like, you know, the, you know, the whatever the. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to use the third-rate company, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking. Oh yeah, they weren't. They weren't uh, the top tier. They didn't have the greatest artists, but they still had. Tom Sutton, Pat Boyette, Steve Ditko, etc. They had good art. They had good stories. They did um, have good stories. And uh, just well, they're the B movies of, of yeah. 
movies yeah. of comics. And sometimes that's more entertaining than... Uh, In a weird way, yeah. Yeah, you know, because they're not as polished. And sometimes if, you know, if the, the drawing's a little rough or the inking's a little rough, it, it kind of adds some, especially if it's a creepy story. Yeah. You know, adds something to it. Yeah, but it was always... It was always... For a while, there was Warren's was number one, and those took up a buck. So yeah. those were like, you know, that killed like the the, the allowance for a week. Yeah. But then it was, uh, you know, the the comics in the seventies, twenty cents, fifteen cents, maybe. I mean, I remember buying. I remember when I was a kid in the sixties, I would go. My dad would take me to the drugstore, and I could get two comics for a quarter. It would be twelve cents each and a penny for. Uh, Oh, but I, I told this story before, but I remember the day that I went to the comic shop and I saw it there and I went and it was 50 cents. And I was like, oh, Vampirella number one. I was like, oh, so I told my dad, could I have another quarter? <laughs> yeah, uh, here you go. So I buy this thing and my dad thinks I got a porn mag. He's like, what is that? It's a comic book. Let me see that. No, okay, it's a comic book. There you go. <laughs> well, the, the smoke shop. We used to call that a candy store because we'd buy candy, but it's mostly at the back, and it had a little tiny grocery in the back. Um, but they would—you'd have the comic, you had the big magazine rack, you'd have the comic book on the first two or three tiers, and then up above you'd have like the cheap detective stuff and some of the other magazines, and then on the very top is where you had the dirty magazines and yeah, yeah. <laughs> famous monster, and so yeah. you. Can I see the famous monster? No, you're a kid. That's for adults. Really? They would do that to you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, not, when I, not where I lived. Where I lived, when I went to this one specific drugstore, which was like Mecca. That was a great drugstore on Palm Avenue and 41st Street. The Rexall, Ligged Drugs, whatever it was called. You had two spinner racks, and then you had the magazine sh shelf or whatever. And right near the comics, you know, yeah. there would be... The Warrens, but then as you kept going further down, you would get like wrestling magazines, and then you would get Stag and For Men Only, and all those at the end. But Famous Monsters would always be with the, you know, because it was the same company. With the, and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't tell you you couldn't get it. Even yes. Monster Times, that you could get those, they wouldn't give you a, a hard time about it. Wow, yeah, this one for some reason without, yeah, it was in the sixties. Uh, and for some reason, he just felt that that wasn't for kids or whatever. Um, and I can remember going into one store and, and you know, seeing, um, uh, uh, you know, they had the rack of magazines and stuff. And I asked her if she had, uh, I forget what the hell I asked, if she had like magazines. or something. And I think she thought I was looking for like Playboy or a penthouse. And then I just said, do you have uh, magazines? And you know, she give me a dirty look and says, "No, we don't carry those." Said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for Planet of the Apes. Yeah, you weren't looking for you weren't looking for a penthouse. No, I was looking for Planet of the Apes, and she's like, rah, rah, rah. "It's like okay, it's but, all right. but but you know, there was a store where we used to live uh, near the mall. It was called Treasury, and it was kind of like a it was like a Walmart act actually because it was a it was a supermarket in the back. Right. And in front of his department store, sold everything, including records, wow. great records. But they had a newsstand, and the newsstand had all the dirty magazines there. <laughs> so you could actually sit there while your parents were shopping and look at Penthouse, Playboy, and you're like, holy, nobody would stop you. You'd be like, uh, well, you would, you'd be a little, hmm, you know, put it back or whatever, but nobody would stop you. And uh -huh. then one day, <laughs> this was the worst, it was the best. We were skipping school, me and my friend. We were like 14 or something. And we, we missed the bus on purpose. And we just were walking around. And we went to Treasury. And they had a penthouse. And my friend goes, hey, why don't you go and buy it? And I said, man, we're like 14. They're not going to sell it to us. Come on, man. I go, no, nah, dude. They're not going to sell it. He goes, well, I'm going to buy it. So they sold it to him. Uh, okay. A girl that's just like, okay, here you go. you know. And I was like, oh, my God. That was like. Are you kidding me? We got you. You bought a dirty magazine. Oh my god! You know, we looked at it and it was, we were like going crazy over it. I was like, so yeah. I mean, event sometimes. I guess Florida, you know, being Florida, 
Yeah. They just sold you crap, you know. I mean, I, I never, I never had any idea. I never had the, an inkling they would do that. But I guess the girl at the counter said, "Well, whatever. I don't care." Exactly. Uh, there was a, when we moved out to the suburbs. There was a Seven oh, Eleven there, That's like the only place that sold comics and magazines and stuff. Yeah. And uh, the penthouse and Playboy and anything else they kept under the counter. Yeah, or behind the counter. No, under the counter. Oh, under the counter. So you had to go ask for it. And a couple of times the, the person would say, no, you're too young. I was like 17 or 18 or something like that. Wow, that never happened to me. But then, I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> you, must have been, you must have been like baby face or something. Oh, yeah. That's why I have this goatee. Because when I shave off, I look like I'm 12. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. When I, was like, when I was like 17 or whatever, again, drugstores in, in, in South Florida... They would have the Playboy on the stands, and I remember a couple of times I was like, "Well, maybe I was," but I was already seventeen. I go, oh, "I don't care," so yeah. I took it up and I bought like another magazine, like a Rolling Stone, and they would sell them to me. They, they, I never, yeah. I never got prevented from buying a magazine. But then again, I was tall, and I wasn't like fourteen. I was already like seventeen or close to eighteen, and I was of age already. So I never got, I never got hassled yeah. about. Yeah. So if we would go to town. The stores there would would have no problem selling it to you, but that Seven Eleven right by me in the suburbs. Wow, they're really hardcore. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Hell, when we were like sixteen and seventeen, we we actually got into porno theaters. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was my buddy Frank. You know, fortunately, he passed away two years ago. He was like, "Come on, let's go, let's go to the Pussycat Theater." I'm like, "Okay." They're showing Deep Throat and Devil of Miss Jones. I was like, okay. I'm like, I'm not. I wasn't scared, but I go, they're not gonna let us in. The guy at the counter, the guy at the door wouldn't even look at your face. He goes, five, two bucks, three bucks. Here you go, three bucks. Here you go. Boom. We're like, oh my god. Florida. Well, I guess, I guess where I live was like, you know, it was a wild town or whatever. Because I mean, again, we were like maybe 16 or whatever, and I was already tall, and he was, he was kind. Of, I think he would let his facial hair grow out a little bit so he looked older. And we just got in. And I was like, okay. You know, I, I never got prevented ever from buying a magazine. Not even Vampirella, you know, with, which yeah. my dad thought was a porno mag. The lady at the counter, yeah, here, take it. <laughs> I mean, the, the cover sure did kind of look like a porno mag with that Fazetta. Yeah, yeah you know, my, cover. If I brought home, uh, a, like, a Warren or whatever, and it had uh, nudity in it, my mom would freak violence for some reason it was yeah really 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 like heads getting cut off sex bad violence okay yeah <laughs> the violence and then she would even sometimes look askant at a, like a mad magazine mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> wow. oh. and then oh every time we watch we would watch my uh, <laughs> Monty python on sunday nights when it was oh, yeah. over and every time she would walk in the room. That's when they would put a naked lady. Yeah, 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 right. Go, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> Mom, it's not what you Mom, no, they, this just came on. This doesn't happen all the time. Oh, God. No, I can, no, I can tell you stories about... <laughs> no, nobody bothered me about... No, Monty Python, no, but, uh, but at any rate, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, Vampirella, yeah, no problem, you know. I mean, actually, I, f I figure, like, my, when my dad saw it, and he said, Dude, you got a porno, man? <laughs> and he looked at it. He probably said, no, nah, I don't care. You know, I want to see, see what's in here, too. You know? <laughs> he, probably, he probably picked it up to look and see if there's any, like, chicks in it, too. Let me see that. Oh, it's just comics. Yeah, keep it. You know, I was like, oh, whatever. Now, my parents were never, <laughs> were never like, as a matter of fact, I saw, I was watching, uh, I was watching Adam Carolla talking about it. My parents, when I was a kid, he, the way he said it was not the way it was with me, but I kind of get it. It was like, yeah, he goes, my dad, instead of getting a babysitter for me, he would, as a kid, I was like a nine-year-old kid, he would take me to inappropriate movies. And I was like, dad, like Papillon or whatever. I remember seeing like Dirty Harry when I was like, you know, 10, 11 years old. One time my parents wanted to go, but they couldn't, but it was sold out. And then they left, went there with their friends. They were going to get, they were going to take me to see Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Oh my God. And then, and then, and then, like, it, oh, it sold out. So, okay, well, we'll come back at 10. And, and so they went with their friends. And when I came back, my mom goes, well, I'm glad we didn't take you to that movie. I go, oh, really? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they didn't they didn't care. They didn't care. It was like the seventies, you know. But I mean, but I guess she was a little. That was a little bit. Even even though it's not that. It's, even though it's not that sleazy, but I guess for the time or whatever. But yeah, yeah. the big big thing, and uh, yeah, because you know, it used to be where when you would uh, like see somebody get shot, you wouldn't necessarily see a lot. It was on TV, you wouldn't. Yeah, really yeah, see yeah. Lot. But I can remember went to see the Green Berets, and I must have been about like ten. Yeah, it was, it was a matinee on Saturday afternoon, and I went with. Uh, I went with some friends or whatever, and there was one scene where some guy gets shot in the side, turns around, and literally the blood is pouring out of him like it's coming out of a a bottle or something. It just and it was it was really gory in some places, and I'm sure my mom didn't. You know, she had known she wouldn't have let me go. Oh heck, uh, a, a Dirty Harry. They had full frontal nudity. There's a scene where they pull the girl out oh. of the pool and she's buck naked, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was embarrassed, kind of, but you know, I was like not not ashamed. But you know, I was like, hey, whoa, okay. Every time I go to the movies with my folks, and if the scene was getting a little racy, my mom would lean over and say, "Gerard, cover your." That's my full name, Gerard. She says, "Gerard, cover your eyes." So I would put my hands up, but of course, I'd have one uh, one yeah, right. red so I could peek. I I remember my parents took me to see a movie called Ryan's Daughter. Well, it's just some drama. There's yeah. one scene where like uh, what is that? Chris Jones and Sarah Miles, they they they're really getting passionate. He takes off her top and he yeah. grabs her boob. And I was like, I was like, what movies are you guys taking me to see? And my mom, they were just laughing or whatever, you know. And I'm, I'm surprised they got they got that scene through because it was a PG movie. I got a feeling that some somebody was greased or whatever to get, you know. What they used to do for that, they used to put in really hard stuff, and. You know, they would they, edit it down. But they would edit that, but then when it came to the other scene, they're like, well, that's not as bad. So, they were Yeah, like, or was it, oh, this is a drama. <laughs> Kids aren't going to go see this anyway, you know, except for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but as far as comics goes, yeah, I never got any, like, I think my parents were happy that I was reading something. You know, it was like, well, at least you're reading something. They, what they didn't know, I was just looking at the pictures. But, you know, I was kind of I was kind of reading it cursed. You know, cursed. I was like, yeah, it's a story. Yeah, it's all right. But, man, that art is so good. You know, yeah. I was like, that's what I bought them for. You know, Bernie yeah. Wrightson and Creepy. I got to go. I got to go. I remember one time uh, this kid had a Bernie, had a Creepy with a Bernie Wrightson story, the Pepper Lake Monster. And I'm like, oh, my God, where'd you get that? I've never seen it anywhere. It was at the hospital. So I actually walked to the hospital oh. that was about a mile away because the hospital had like a little gift shop right. and they had warrants. So, oh, there you go. I walked to, to get my Bernie Wrightson book there. Yeah, that's how that's how crazy it was. Because back then it was like, you know, you didn't, you know, the, the guys like Wrightson and Kaluta, they only did one or two books. Mm -hmm. But they were like really cool because they were the, the shadows and they were kind of like in, yeah. uh, in a different style from like Kirby or the right. or whatever they had a more of a old time style or more of a whatever it was interesting but yeah i would go all over the place to find this stuff but like i said before when the comic shops opened up that was like oh man fan yeah. fandom i'm in fandom you know yeah. you could find old uh issues that you missed or uh yeah, yeah. heard about and that way i want to see that or you know or issues you didn't even know about as you're going through them i'm like oh and, and actually, the, the one time I remember, I was with my grandmother. We were walking through downtown Miami, and I saw this bookstore. It said Books, Coins, Collectibles. And I'm like, can you stop in here for a minute, Grandma? She says, okay. So I walked in, and I said to the guy, do you have any of those old creepy? And yeah. And he pulled out a box of them, and I was like, oh. I was wow. like, oh, my God. They were like 50 cents, you know. So I got like, and this is like the 19... 70 and i got like a 1965 i get eerie or creepy number five for like 50 cents and i was like oh my god i can't believe i got an old comic oh you know because back then you know you're like 10 or 11 and you know an old comic is a five-year-old comic you know yeah. and you're like oh my god oh. and then I, I whenever we went downtown we had to go to that store or whatever so yeah 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 that was that was those were the days when comics actually some people equate it to music. Those are the days when actually comics 
and music actually meant something. Yeah. Nowadays, I don't know what they mean to people except for maybe they like the art or maybe they just want to collect them. But I don't think it's ever going to be the same for no. the new people like it was for us. Because they have so many more forms of entertainment now. All we had was three channels, a movie, a couple of movies a week, a creature feature, and comics. That was it. The, the music and the comics back then were more independent. And then when the, the corporations came in and started to try to make them a, a highly payable commodity, well, made them a commodity rather than just entertainment. Entertainment. That's when things really started, at least in my opinion. Started to yeah, work. well, I think what happened with music was back then you had to actually like work to buy a record. Now you can get them for free online if you want to. You know, you're going to download them all for free and then it became kind of like it kind of lost its importance maybe you know not yeah. not really but it's just the fact that it became easier and freer to get as opposed to back then where you had to actually like drop some money you know to get yeah. stuff it, it's all it's i don't know it's, it's more complicated than that with comics yeah. it's it's like the, the fact that they a lot of the people passed away and then writers changed and with comics another thing too that happened which is real subtle but it happened in the 80s, 90s, eh, I would say later 90s, is the, the emphasis sh started shifting from the artist to the writer. Writers, yeah. Now it's like, hey, did you get the new book by uh, Bendis or did you get the new book by Mark Millar? It used to be, did you get the new Kirby book? Did you get the new right. uh, Barry Smith book or whatever? Right. So I honestly think it was better when it was more art-centric uh, yeah. than writer-centric right. because... The writers were still good back then, but right. I think the artists were way better. And yeah. the writers, the artists today are okay. There's plenty of good ones, but I can't think of that many great ones. There may be a couple. I mean, I don't want to down. I don't want to like. There's a there's a lot of guys that can draw the hell out of, you know, whoever back then. But do okay. they have the gravitas? No. Well, they a don't. Lot they may get it in the future. They may, but not right now. In the past, a lot of them learned art from illustration, and so they had a lot of yeah. great artists that they would uh, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of artists are influenced by other comic, other books. comic book artists, and it becomes the same with the writers. They're influenced by other comic book writers or earlier writers. And with bands too, a, a band comes out. Oh, I'm really a, a fan of the cream whereas cream would say yeah we're really a fan of the old blues guys right but we just took what they did and we you know we souped it up whereas now it's like well we, we're a big fan of i'm just using an example of the cream right. so we're, we want to sound really close to what they are and you're not doing anything anything new with it you're just kind of like imitating it and that's not to say there aren't bands that are that that, that are doing innovative things they are there's writers who are doing innovative things but I, in my in my opinion the 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 shift the shift of emphasis from artist to writer not that there weren't writers back then they were very well thought of but mm -hmm. that's when comics started to lose interest for me but mm -hmm. you know a lot of the, uh, they they still have fans or whatever I've never ever gone to buy a book oh well Stan Lee wrote it or Roy Thomas right. wrote it or no right. it was never that for me it was always like the opposite. Yeah, it's always the artist that and that, and that was, you know, again, you know, you get off my lawn, old man stuff, whatever, <laughs> you know. But well, anyway, we've been going on for almost an hour, so let's uh, let's stop here, and then we'll be back in a, in a couple of weeks, and we'll talk about more specific comics and or whatever. Or we'll shoot some yeah. more, you know, poop or yeah, whatever. And more, we're going to create this organically. Yeah, it's going to be organic. So, but anyway, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, and. Uh, we should we should look uh, well. I'll 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 link you to some books or whatever. Then we can talk about some specific things or whatever. So all right. Well, that's it for now. I'm not gonna say and read more comics because I think somebody else uses that. You know, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I think that's or somebody else's comics. somebody else's copyright. You know, but read we'll just say old comics. Read more old comics. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. And in the meantime, read more old comics. <laughs>